Uh, so after I measured the thicknesses and, and the mass of those fins, I got this relation between the thickness and the deposition time. This is the mass and deposition time. And this is a very useful uh, graph since we know that there's a deposition rate and we can rely on this. So for instance, if we want to deposit 250 nanometer of 40% uh, iridium mixed with 60% of platinum, we know that roughly about 16 minutes of deposition will give us uh, very uh, controlled thickness film. Uh, X-ray, uh, typical X-ray diffractions were done for two main purposes. Uh, first, I had to calculate the grain size by using Scherer equation. Uh, and the second was to find the correspondence between the, this electroplated thin film to make sure if I have an alloy, if it, and it's not just, just pure platinum or something else. Uh, so as you can see, the, uh, this is the platinum uh, X-ray diffraction pigs, platinum iridium, uh, which I made the film, and these four are control samples. So I, uh, as you can see, these pigs fit uh, just between the pure iridium and pure platinum, indicating that uh, we have an alloy in, 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 into the film. And on the right side, we see the enlarged uh, extra diffraction peaks for just, just a fill. And these arrows uh, show some specific uh, planes that uh, are related to some specific angles, uh, with each, which is in good agreement with the literature. Oh, but this is. Uh, uh, an EIS measurement, which means uh, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy measurement. In this measurement, we try to measure the uh, surface uh, roughness or, or high surface area. We, we just wanted to prove that we have a high surface area of films, even though it's uh, smooth. So in this technique, uh, we apply an AC signal and we measure the current. Uh, these two are body parts. Uh, on the left side, we see the log of uh, impedance versus log of frequency. On the right side, we see uh, phase angle versus log of frequency. So the red, uh, the red ones correspond to control samples, and the black ones correspond to uh, 4, 8, 16, and 32 minutes of electrodepositive film. And we can see that uh, considering this equation, which shows that uh, Impedance is inversely proportional to the capacitance. So by decreasing the impedance, we know that the capacitance is increased, uh, and the, the main result is that we have a high surface area. And again, by increasing the deposition time, again, the impedance decreased, meaning that uh, we have a high surface area, even though it's a smooth field uh, at, at a nanoscale roughness. Uh, these body plots belong to uh, high surface area electrode deposit as I showed in previous slides. Uh, and then on top of microelectrode, the red one belongs to pure platinum, which is very smooth. And after deposition, we see that more than two order of magnitude, roughly about two and a half order of magnitude impedance uh, was improved or capacitance was increased. So the nanoindentation uh, uh, measurements were done in order to measure the hardness of the film because one of the goals uh, was to uh, improve the mechanical properties. So this is a uh, nanoindentation measurement of the platinum foil. I had just to compare some with, uh, with, with my platinum iridium film. So as you can see on the right side, the indentation depth is almost half of the indentation depth for the platinum foil, indicating that the hardness was, uh, was increased uh, nearly 100%. Uh, this uh, voltage response uh, measurement is being done in my lab by using pulse generator. This is an in vitro measurement. So as I mentioned previously, current is pulsed. 
uh, 800 microamps biphasic and symmetric, which is this is very very high for 200 micron uh, diameter electrode. This is the, 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 the limit of the pulse generator that I use. You can't go higher than that. So after 60 days of pulsing 24/7, we this is the voltage response, uh, and this test is being done for two purposes. First, we need to know how durable is the material. If you see the delamination after some, some period of time by uh, applying some current pulses. And the second one, which is very important, we need to measure the voltage, which is from this point to this point. So the measured voltage for this amount of charge is roughly about 0.3 volts. So we know that the water window uh, starts from to break from uh, roughly around uh, 0.7 volt by means of if we go, if this voltage drops to nearly 0.7 volt, the water will start to decompose and it's not safe at all and it's very dangerous for the patient. So this means that even though we apply uh, we, a very high amount of current, still it is very safe for the patient. So the acceleration factor in my lab was 40 times. Why? Because it's been paused for 24 hours, seven days a week. So 20, uh, the patient uses maximum of uh, 12 hours a day. So this is two times two x factor. And the, the frequency that I apply my, my chart, uh, the, uh, the pulses is 400 pulses per second, which in real uh, device for the patient is all roughly about 20 hertz. So this is another 20 times. So total of 40 x is the acceleration factor. We need to do this in order to uh, evaluate in short period of time how many years the patient could be used could, could use this device. So because it was 60 days so far, and also right now it's being run. So 60 days times 40 is like 2,400 days is roughly about six and a half years. Uh, minimum is guaranteed that this uh, alloy will last in, in patients eye with no defects. And the calculated charge density, considering this 800 micro microamps, is roughly about 2.5 uh, milli uh, coulomb per centimeter square, which is uh, twice as much, which was needed for 1,000 electrons. Uh, a stable EIS measurements, so I, I measured every other day the uh, impedance uh, for electrochemical uh, impedance spectroscopy of these microelectrodes inside of uh, 0.05 molar sulfuric acid at room temperature in order to see if we uh, can recognize any changes on the surface of the film because of this harsh environment and being pulsed for 24-7. As you can see, all these body plots are matching on top of each other, indicating that the adhesion of the field is very reliable and, and uh, no changes has been found on the surface. The conclusion includes the all, all the goals were met. Uh, an efficient method of deposition was developed by myself. Uh, electrochemical surface analysis of the surface showed an excellent result. Uh, EIS showed, EIS results showed no changes after 60 days, which is perfect. And this alloy uh, amortization measurement again showed 100% uh, improvement in its mechanical properties. And uh, this electrode positive PDIR uh, is, a, is a good promise and, a, and an ideal electrode for, for materials, for neural schematic electrodes. Uh, and I should mention that uh, my developed alloy has already found its place in biomedical application. So next year, a book uh, with the title of Nanoneurosurgery and Nanoneuroscience will be published. And I got an offer that they, they will introduce my alloy in that book. And I'm pretty happy because of that. So my acknowledgement for the, the NBSERC. And at the very end, I just want to show a real video of the clinical trial with one of the patients that has the implant. And she was totally blind, and now she can recognize some letters. Uh, so she wears one of the glasses with, with the implants in, inside of her eyes. 
uh, but one of his one of her eyes. So in this, uh, so the, 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 there's no sound connected, but. Basically, she's able to recognize all the letters. This is a picture that camera captures. This is a simulated picture, the way she sees. So she has been able to recognize all these letters. Even C and O are very close to each other, they're very similar. She is able to recognize. Unfortunately, the sound is not connected, but she was able to recognize all those letters. Thank you so much.